Trade What You See with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. And direct from the Board of Explosion in Chicago, Illinois, is none other than Rich Anderson. Rich, what happened to the grain report? Yeah, you know, the, the Bears were counting on really next week or someplace, and they didn't get them. In fact, they, uh, they pulled the rug out from under them. The corn acres, the average guess was 41 or the average stocks was 41.44, and the stocks came in 41.12. So, so the stocks came in 30 million less in corn, 20 million less in beans, but the acres came in um, over a million acres less in corn at 92.69. Wow. And here we are in the middle of the growing season, too. Right. And, by the way, my forecast in Minneapolis is for 90-degree weather starting, I think, on Saturday for four days in a row at least. And the 10 to 14-day for, forecast is what everybody's going to fixate it on. Satellite that, and you run it. So it's going to be a wild uh, kind of a deal. But, I mean, look what the temperatures got on the West Coast. The bean acres, by the way, they came in off one acres less, less. I mean take my breath away um we need more acres not that. yeah um, yeah that's this is almost as big a curveball as we had uh, last year so yeah, well, that, i know you're a busy guy i just thought i'd give you that because no. <laughs> um <laughs> i'm not busy anymore rich my computers are down i'm still trying to put this new computer together and it's not an easy task but hey thanks for calling in i appreciate it because uh, i had heard from CNBC in the background that the report was relatively bullish, and people in the Dan had re reported that it was pretty bullish too. But uh, maybe yeah, we'll have I mean, you the on. The stocks are less, and, and the, yeah. we've already have tight stocks, and they're less. And the acres, they were looking, Larry, these guys are looking for three to four million extra acres, and they got less acres, not more. They got wow. three less plus. So it's it's wow. a, a scary situation, and, and when it gets hot, it, you know, the corn will go into tap, and when it gets hot, it doesn't pollinate, so then you don't get as much. Uh -huh. Your corn doesn't fill yeah. out to the end, and, yeah. and it doesn't have as many rows of corn, and that's what the yield sure. go way down. So did, it's going to be interesting the, in July. Yeah. That's all I can say. But what's the, what is the uh, what's a, what's a, how much are beans up right now, Rich? Uh, let me let me look. Uh, hold hold the phone. Uh, Mr. Z is telling us that these corn is already limited up, so that means the beans are probably pretty strong too. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was going to yeah, be this, doing. Okay, this thing, this thing's going to fly, and you know, any weather concerns at all, and uh, we hmm. retest, we retest the highs. The, by, by the way, India lowered its import tax on bean oil by five percent, wow. which <laughs> you know we had the curveball. Important to remember that. The other, the government mandates, the other government mandated percent of, for blending of ethanol, and the government could throw us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, listen, hey, listen, I'll let you go, buddy, because I know you're real busy, and we'll have you on after the holidays, okay, pal? Okay. Rich Anderson, folks, reporting from Minneapolis. Okay, the uh, very, very bullish numbers in the, in the grains. Uh, folks, uh, I, as I was trying to tell you, I was getting to try to do a special report on these, and my computers have been down for two days, and there's just personally nothing that I can do. I'm able to get out a chart once in a while here and there, and that's about it. And I have people here, I have two people here right now working on it to try to get it up and running. The problem is I've got so much data coming in uh, the that it's it's just hard for the new computer, even though it's bigger than this one and faster and everything. It, because the programs are different, they're, they're having a hard time communicating with it. With it this lets that would tell me may or may not be the truth. You know, I, I'm not even sure of that. So let's take a look here. One thing that uh, I was listening to Basil show, and he was talking about his peak C coming up here uh, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and in the stock market. And let's just get this up here. I want to show you this because this is something that I got from Larry Williams.
him many, many years ago. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a five. It's called a five or a seven up pattern. Uh, if the markets go up five days in a row, the odds are at 70 percent on day six and 85 percent on day seven that there is a favorable chance for the market to back off. After eight days up, after eight days up, it's in a run. So in other words, if it goes nine days, it can go 16, 18, 20. So you've got to be very, very careful up here. You have to be able to you know, manage your risk the best that you possibly can. But the odds favor that the – and it, believe me, that's it's just a probability, folks. It's just a probability. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's remind ourselves of that no matter what happened. We will have Tim Bost on as our guest today at the break, and then tomorrow we will have uh, John Jameson will be talking to us about blockchains and uh, cryptocurrencies. Let's take a quick look here at this silver market because we were talking with Larry Williams yesterday uh, on the air, and he was saying that he covered his silver uh, just about right where we were talking here at 2587. It's up now uh, a good 40 cents higher than that. And they noticed that those bottoms were equal. They couldn't even take out the previous bottom. The gold went down and took out the new lows by about uh, ten dollars. Uh, so far, we're trading at around seventeen sixty-seven. We still, well, not we still believe, but I still believe we've got a chance for that silver to get down to the, uh, excuse me, the gold to get down one more time to 1730 uh, and then I think that's when we'd like to see it going. We've been able to see how these things are going. Folks, uh, the report, they're they're posting it here in the web room here for a TFNN, which is really great for foes, foes of you that want really instant information. Mr. Z is kind enough to put this up here, but it is really a screamingly bullish report, which I assumed it was going to be just by looking at the charts. That's what I was trying to do was to do this special report saying, hey, this thing is not over. I've been saying that for a few days. Unfortunately, the uh, bus has left the station, and uh, I'm not on the bus, but I will. Uh, I'll get on the bus eventually. So <laughs> remind ourselves that sometimes you have chicken soup, and sometimes you have chicken salad. It depends on how much chicken you're using and what you're having for supper. All right, let's take a look at natural gas, folks, because uh, we had a really critical level here. I want to show you the pattern yesterday. Uh, we've reached these objectives here in natural gas. It might go a lot higher from this level uh, I, I there's a very strong probability that it could but if we look at this on the very very long-term weekly basis we'll just get this up here so you can see it we have made the 61 percent retracement folks we've actually uh, went above it and then backed off a little bit but uh, uh, that that is a completed pattern so I would kind of really look at that and see that uh, Okay, uh, Larry, limit down, limit up long on corn. How can you get out today? Ruby, are you short corn by any chance? Well, there's, you can leave your order in. You can put an order in to buy it. And uh, if it trades, and if it does trade, you can get in. Oh, if you're long, do you don't. <laughs> you, uh, in order to get out, if you want to get out at limit up, Ruby, all you have to do is to put a sell order in there. The people that are short would love to see you coming to that party. But I, I would put a stop five cents lower than where it is right now and let it rip because this is really very, very bullish. Mr. Z, try to explain that to her, please. And the, we'll cover that when we get back. 877-927-6648. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. 
The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're chatting in the room with Ruby and Mr. Z, and Ruby has been fortunate enough to be long corn. It went limit up, and now it's a penny or two off limit, as I understand it. And I will tell you this, folks, if this were my position, I would take the uh, take the profits right here. And uh, the, the limit up in corn, is it varies, Bill, by percentage. I don't know. Mr. Z would know that. It's so rare that it goes limit up uh, that I don't know what those are anymore. It, it used to be 30 cents, but they've changed that. The reason why, if it's still trading near limit up, uh, they're saying limit is, uh, Mr. Z saying limit up is 40 cents is $2,000. If this were as bullish as it says it is, it shouldn't be trading, in my opinion. In other words, that thing is so bullish that there's just no way that it should be trading. And so I'm going to say, uh, if somebody else was willing to sell it near limit up and it came off limit, I, that's good enough for me. I made my biggest, my biggest, smartest thing I ever did in all my years of trading was in uh, 1976, excuse me, in 75, when the, uh, the, the they said the soybeans would be up five limits in a row and soybean oil would be up and uh, soybean meal would be limit up and they could barely open higher. They went limit down for three or four days in a row and I got out right at the high. Just because the market was telling me that, oh, this is going to go up forever, it's never going to stop going up. So that's all I'm doing. And believe me, if, if it can't lock limit up on a report like this, <laughs> I'd be flat out scared. I actually would. I mean, I'd be really scared. So I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. The uh, Are they all limit up now? Okay. Limit up, limit up, limit up. Maybe they are. I don't know. I'm just telling you how I do it, folks. I, I believe you're going to get another chance. <laughs> you know, maybe the lines on the charts, they look like dots, but uh, I would just be taking profits there. That's uh, all I would be. The other thing you do is you could put a stop and nickel under limit up if you wanted to do that. But uh, the reports are very, very emotional, especially one like this. Uh, someone's asked a question about the movie star stuff. What was my biggest movie star? Uh, thing uh, that I could ever talk about. And, you know, that I, I, folks, I was not close to a lot of those movie stars. I mean, there was a half a dozen or maybe a few more than that that I was really close friends with. I mean, you know, we went to their homes and had, you know, Christmas parties and stuff. But most of them, they were acquaintances. They knew who I was and I knew who they were. Like, you've met them on the street. And uh, one of the one of the biggest stars, of course, was uh, Steve McQueen. And I met him in 1972 at Payne Weber there in Beverly Hills, right on the corner where Little Santa Monica reaches, uh, merges with Wilshire Boulevard. And they have a little, uh, there was a little cafe there, Little Samo, which was everybody went there to have breakfast. 
and uh, you know we they had a trading room there where you had a you know you could sit and chat and he would come in there and I probably met him a half a dozen times and we made some money trading soybean oil and soybean meal and uh, he knew who I was I knew who he was and we had breakfast over at the little Samo cafe several times and then uh, they were getting ready to bring in uh, to put um, the uh, Cedar Sinai Medical Center tear down the old one and build up the new medical center that's still there and that was going to be in about two years and I had uh, three people from Eli Lilly coming out to uh, work on the, uh, they were going to do the opening because Lilly wanted to give them a great deal of money so they could put some of the Lilly products on the formulary. And so they asked me uh, to take them over there. And so I said, okay, meet me at seven o'clock. And those guys from Indianapolis never started before nine o'clock. So they had to get up at seven o'clock California time and meet me in the little Sambo Cafe to have breakfast. And then we were going to go over to the medical center and uh, meet some of the folks there. Well, we were having breakfast there and my back's to the to the door and in walks Mr. McQueen. And he comes over and he pats me on the shoulder. Larry, who are your friends? And I said, oh, these are the guys from Lilly. He said, hey, did you guys know that I'm from Beach Grove, Indiana? He was right outside of Indianapolis. It's a small town just to east of uh, west of uh, uh, Indianapolis. And so he was a good old Hoosier. And so we started chatting and he was very nice. And, uh, you know, these guys, he was there about a half hour, had a cup of coffee with us and stuff. And then he left. And then the funny fun part was when the check came, the guy from Lilly said, check, please. And the, the waitress said, you've got to be kidding. And that was the end of that. <laughs> Mr. McQueen picked up the check. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> oh, some of these stories, I don't know. I don't know why you asked me these folks, but I, I talked to Larry after Larry Williams of the show afterwards and asked if he was ever going to write an autobiography. And he said, Larry, I, he said, we've been doing this 55 years. And he said, how do you put 55 years into an autobiography? He said, the thing would be about 1,300 pages or more. And I said, yeah, I know. But, you know, if you just did some of the other stuff, I would say, you know, you ought to be able to write something about it. But uh, someone's asked me my turning point at Eli Lilly, you know, when I decided to quit. It was very simple. It was January 1970, and I was at Lilly, and I was in the, uh, uh, in the marketing medical department, and they sent me down to uh, Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta to try to get the cephalosporin antibiotic Keflin on the formulary because they were having a hard time doing it. And the problem was that the guy that was running the place in, in, in Atlanta, Dr. Harlan Stone, who was chief of surgery, did not like the medical director at Eli Lilly at all. So I went down there for two days trying to get in there to visit him. And I, I was having two days on the last day, which was a, uh, which was a Friday. I, uh, uh, finally, it was around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't going to get in, and I said to the girl, the, wait, the secretary there, she said, he's, he's in a really bad mood. He said, there's a family member that's very ill. And so I said, okay, I understand. I said, I'm just going to go to the movies and see airport. I know what he's going through. And I, I walked out the door. He came out of the back door, and he said, uh, he said, he said uh, you're going to the movies? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm Harlan Stone. I said, yeah, I've been waiting to see you for two days. He said, come on, we'll go to the movies. So we had to see the movies, airport. And uh, had, a, had a great time. And then he said, come on. He said, we'll go out to the house and we'll have some dinner and I'll take you back to the uh, medical center. You can pick up your car. So we get there and I said, I'm sorry to hear that you're having a, someone in the family sick. He said, no, it's not the family. He said, it's my horse. He said, uh, he has a little ranch out there. And so he... Uh, uh, little ranch. It was a nice ranch. And anyway, the horse was extremely ill. And uh, he had a veterinarian looking at him and stuff. And the veterinarian said, he's got some type of sepsis, which is an infection. I said, uh, gee, I said, why don't you just try Keflin on that horse, you know, cephalosporin. And the, the, the vet said, well, I've never used it before. And Harlan Stone says, neither have I. And he said, well, let's give it a shot. And so he did. And I get back to the office on Monday morning. And guess what happens? I get called into the office up to the seventh floor where the big executives were. I walk in, there's the medical director, there's my boss and his boss, and they were not very happy. And they said, uh, what did you do with Harlan Stone? And I said, uh, no, the horse didn't die. He won the Kentucky Derby on Saturday. No, he, he horse made it through, but the horse was still sick on Monday. It took two or three days of giving the, the horse drugs. And finally, when, uh, when the horse got better, Harlan Stone was just absolutely ecstatic about it. For two days, I thought my job was history. And when I, when I realized that I did the best I could, I was still going to get my, my little took us fired. I said, I don't need this crap anymore because I was still trading. And I was actually making more trading than I was with Lily. But 
that was mainly. And then, then three weeks later, my mom died unexpectedly, and that was it. That my my days at Lily were uh, very you know, they were very narrowed down. I stayed an extra three years, and uh, that was pretty much it. But I have to. The funny part of this story is that. Uh, well, I'll tell that another time. But that, that was that my my relationship with Harlan Stone proceeded for many years, and his son is still at Mayo Clinic here in Scottsdale. So uh, he was a great man. He certainly helped me a lot. Hey, we'll get back to business. Mr. Boss is going to be in the house. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors Tom O'Brien has just published his 1,000th Gold Report. It's amazing to think that Tom has been writing his weekly Gold Report for almost 20 years. To celebrate the 1,000th issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, we've just launched a Tiger Dollar Sale, which runs for two weeks only through July 4th weekend. We've doubled all the Tiger Dollar bonuses, where you can now get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. But that's not all. Inflation is here, and the price of the Gold Report is going up after July 4th. Right now, you can lock in the Gold Report at the current pricing of $97 a month for as long as you remain a subscriber. This deal won't come around again. Get your Tiger Dollars today and apply them to the Gold Report before the price goes up on July 5th. Tiger Dollars never expire and are good for any TFNN newsletter or service as a great way to add savings. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and help us celebrate Tom O'Brien's 1000th Gold Report. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're having a tiny bit of technical difficulties with Tim, but we'll hopefully get him on in just a minute. I'll finish the story with uh, Harlan Stone and the horse, and uh, that ended pretty much. I decided that was going to be it. Then right after my mother passed away on the 28th of January of 1970, I was in California living by the 1st of February of that year, and that's when I had went back to Conti Commodity and started trading. And Again, I'd started there in 65 when it was the uh, – 
Clayton Brokerage, and that got started going, and that was it. I stayed with Lilly for uh, three more years until they built the Cedar sinai Medical Center. The reason why they sent me, this is really funny, folks, the reason why they sent me to California is uh, because they had found out that I had, that the whole reason for Harlan Stone you know, doing this thing was because his horse was was saved. Of course, that horse weighed 1,200 pounds, and they had to use a lot of stuff on him. And the stuff was <laughs> cephalosporins were really, really safe compared to the crap that people were using, chloromycetin and tetracyclines and stuff. So he was pretty much for it. So I get there. Lily apologized. Are you kidding me? They never do that. Anyway, the uh, so I, I had to go to – my job was to get uh, on the formularies of USC – uh, UCLA and uh, Cedar Sinai Medical Center, and also the City of Hope to get the cephalosporin antibiotics uh, on the on the formulary there. And they, I remember when I left, my boss in in L Indianapolis said, "You know, they gave you this job because you know you're not, you're not going to be able to do it." And I said, "Yeah, I know." And so, but I was I was just interested in getting back to California. That's all I cared about. And my my ex wife wanted to go back too because we hated the weather. And so uh, we got a, we lived had the house in Westlake Village, and so we were all set up. Everything was going good, and so I get back, and the whole thing started. So I go back to trying to get these things on the formulary, and I couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it. So one day, I think it was Harlan Stone's birthday. I gave him a call on his birthday, and I told him I said, "Yeah, I said I wish it was easy to meet you as I get some of these dudes out here." He said, "I just can't." Uh, I said, I can't reach him. And he said, well, who, who's the biggest one? I said, well, uh, Leon Morgenstern at the uh, University of, uh, uh, excuse me, at the Cedar sinai Medical Center. He said, I know Leon. And he, I said, you do? And he said, I put in a good word for me. He said, consider it done. And by golly, I got a phone call that afternoon from Leon Morgenstern's secretary to come in and see him. You never got to see him. He was that busy. I mean, it was just impossible. Next morning, I go in. There he was. He said, I understand you're a good friend of Harlan's. And I said, yes. He said, I, I, I really enjoyed it. He said, he told me the story about the horse. And I said, yeah, it's really something. And he said, what's your problem here? I said, I'd like to get this thing on the formulary. He said, well, I don't know a lot about the drug. And he said, I'm not really very fond of Eli Lilly. Uh, and he, for, I don't know what the problem was. And he said, but we'll give it a shot. And so he did. And by golly, he uh, got through and everything was good. And then I had a buddy down in New Orleans that was with the Oshner Clinic down there at uh, – uh, and so at, at, I can't even remember the name of it. Oh gosh, uh, Tulane. And so I, uh, uh, I talked to him, and he said, I can't get the darn thing on either. And so I called Harlan Stone again, and he also knew John Eichner. And John Eichner called up, and by golly, got that one on too. So that's how it all started. After that, man, I was uh, they they I, they couldn't touch me. You know, I don't think uh, Tim is going to make it today. He must have got tied up and he's kind of busy. And uh, believe me, to me, to try to explain the uh, this is the way the technical things are running today, folks. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, just uh, let, let's just go back to the grains for just a minute here, folks, because that's the one thing that I do. Uh, yes, they were very expensive, Mar uh, Dr. Dr. Mark. They certainly were very expensive. That was one just to treat that horse. Uh, Dr. Mark was uh, about $3,500 because the horse weighed 1,200 pounds and they had just enough in the in the in the pharmacy to treat that horse. They, did, they weren't even using it on patients. And so they had to give him so many doses. It was enough for 10 patients, I believe, something like that. And for three days. And of course, Lily covered, you know, took care of the cost and everything. But it was extremely expensive at that time. And, and, and it remained that way for many, many years. Uh, but, you know, this is the way pharmaceutical firms make it. They like to get their money back. But it was a huge advance in, in antibiotics, and uh, that was uh, that was the whole deal. Then they came out with the oral version of it in the mid-'70s, I believe. Uh, that was called uh, – I can't even remember that. Keflex. Yeah, Keflex was the uh, one that was the oral version of it, and it's very good. Uh, Tim, Tim will be calling in in just a few minutes, so I'll set you up. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like to tell the, the you know these stories about the movie stars, but well, there is one. Last night, perfect example. I'm watching something. It was, I was trying to get this darn computer working. It's like 9:30 at night, 12:30 New York. Still, the guy was getting ready to leave, and I'm watching a movie on TV. Sam Whiskey with. Uh, Angie Dickinson, Burt Reynolds, and Clint Walker. And Clint Walker was—he lived two doors down from us in Westlake Village for seven years. 
and he drove he drove a huge he a huge pickup truck. He was such a nice guy you'd never know he was a big movie star and he was he was a huge movie star back in those days of the 60s and 70s. He he died just a few years ago uh, up in uh, Grass Valley in Nevada City, same place where um, Jim Hurst passed away. And he was up there fishing, just like he always did. He was, I think, in his early 90s or something like that, in pretty good health. But he was a wonderful man. He just never, always soft-spoken, always takes time to visit. And guess who we have in the house? None other than the boss man himself. Timothy, are you there? <laughs> Hello there. Save, save my bacon, baby. I've got, here today. I got life rafts all around me trying to salvage this program today. Tell us what you're looking at, buddy. <laughs> We, we are looking at the trans-Neptunian factor Zeus uh, today, uh -huh. and uh, it's a very, very interesting thing to, to uh, take a look at here uh, as we e examine uh, all, all of the uh, dynamics associated with it. What we're dealing with is a trans-Neptunian uh, factor uh, with Zeus, and uh, uh, this is one of the Kuiper Belt objects way out beyond uh, the edges of the solar system. Uh, has a, a, a long-term cycle over 445 years for it to make a complete or orbit around the sun. So it's one of those very, very slow-moving uh, dynamics. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, it, it also is symbolically associated with uh, lots of action, uh, very, very uh, uh, forceful uh, dynamics in general. Uh, and when we're looking at it in mundane astrology, looking at uh, uh, the charts of companies and nations and things of that sort, it's all about leadership and kind of leading the charge uh, in many ways. So it's also associated with military action and uh, weaponry in general, big machinery, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but wow. we're less interested in all those symbolic interpretations of it as we are in the cycles uh, of uh, Zeus. And so as we look uh, at uh, uh, the cycles, uh, what we're considering here are primarily the times that it moves in and out of uh, retrograde motion. And these give us uh, opportunities for changes in trend in markets in general. Uh, and uh, basically what we're looking at here uh, is uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, a, a shift in, in, in market dynamics associated with this. Uh, now, it turns out that uh, it, it, the, uh, because of the cycle involved, it's almost the same date each year when it goes uh, uh, direct and, and, and retrograde. And so we've got a listing here. What we're really interested in, of course, is the fact that we have coming up here in just a couple of days, uh, on uh, Sunday, July 4th, in fact, uh, the uh, trans-Neptunian uh, uh, factor Zeus making a direct station uh, on uh, the 4th of July. And so oh, that's wow. kind of an unusual thing. Of course, uh, uh, that's a Sunday. The markets will be closed on Monday the 5th. Uh, but we're looking here at some of the, uh, the, the Zeus dynamics uh, that can apply uh, uh, to uh, the, the markets in, in, in general as we uh, try to, to take all of that uh, in, into consideration. Uh, so it's, okay, a, Tim, it's a very uh, interesting kind of, of, of a dynamic when we begin to apply this. We'll take a break here, Tim. We'll be right back, Are okay? You the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, we're back, folks, talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. And, Tim, the next chart you're looking at is the Chicago Board of Trade 30-year T-bond. And, again, Zeus seems to be in the driver's seat. Can you want to tell us what you're looking at here, please? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as, as we look at uh, the 30-year bonds here, uh, what we see is uh, generally a decline prior to these Zeus stations uh, that it, uh, backs off a little bit. It, it, it slows down slightly, uh, but uh, we definitely would be looking at short positions. Now, as we study these charts around these uh, planetary stations like this, our aim is to come up with the highest probability trade that we can find. So we backtest a variety of potential entry points, and it makes a big difference uh, when we get into a trade. We don't always try to trade uh, on the date of the planetary station itself. Of course, in this case, uh, with the station occurring on the 4th of July, uh, and we're seeing uh, you know, the markets closed on the 5th, uh, our earliest uh, entry point for any trade will be really on the 6th that we're looking at a couple days uh, after the station. In this case, uh, we discovered that the uh, highest probability trade uh, with uh, the 30 years is uh, a, a one-day uh, turnaround here. Uh, we were uh, looking at selling it short on uh, uh, Wednesday the uh, 7th of uh, of July uh, and then uh, covering that position the following day. Uh, based on our back trusting, that uh, trade has almost an 82% probability of being a winning trade uh, as compared with uh, different entry points uh, in this uh, generally declining uh, market. Now, as we look at these charts, of course, what we're doing is going uh, back and, and getting all of our historical data uh, from uh, the 30-year uh, tre treasuries and uh, comparing that to what has happened in the past with these uh, uh, Zeus uh, stations. And so we can say with a great deal of confidence then based on that past performance, uh, it has a, an 81.6% probability of being a winning trade if we uh, enter on the 7th and, and then cover that position the following day. Uh, of course, uh, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. We want to stay on the good side of the authorities there and remind you of that. Uh, but uh, that's what the past <laughs> performance looks like at any rate. So you don't have anything in the 100% category? Not a damn thing. <laughs> oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Oh, how well, about hang it up again how about the, you're increasing, though. If you look at the dollar index that you're looking at, that's an 85% probability. Right, right. What, the probabilities vary here. And again, what we do is look at the station and we can say, okay, just from this chart, uh, looks like we got a pretty bearish picture in front of us here. Uh, but in this case, we're going to wait until fairly late in the cycle uh, and, and uh, uh, enter the trade uh, with a short position on the 22nd of July. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, that pops in, uh, uh, you know, uh, two and a half weeks after the uh, uh, the, the time of the station itself. 
Uh, but then uh, we're going to uh, propose to cover that four days later uh, on uh, uh, Tuesday, the uh, the 26th, uh, for that uh, short position. That's got an 85.7 percent probability of being a winning trade. And uh, from the looks of things, uh, we would expect a, a, a reasonable uh, rate of return on that uh, as well. Mm -hmm. That left-hand column uh, shows the percentages. So we'd be looking at a decline of, uh, of around seven to eight uh, eight tenths of a percent. Uh, just in that uh, brief period, and so that looks uh, fairly favorable based not only on the probability of it being a winning trade, but also on the, the likelihood of a return there. This is great. Now, the next one you're looking at is the yellow metal itself that we love here at TFNN, the gold. So we what are we looking at? Gold. Don't we now? <laughs> yes, we, we do. We expect seeing uh, an inverse uh, uh, situation here. As the dollar declines, uh, we would expect uh, uh, gold to uh, respond in the opposite uh, kind of direction. What's interesting about this chart uh, is the uh, obvious nature of the impact of the Zeus Direct stations. Uh, it typically comes very, very close to nailing an exact bottom uh, for uh, gold uh, trades. Uh, and of course, as we look at these charts here, we're looking at 30 days days before, 30 days after uh, that, uh, that date uh, with our, our chart here. Uh, and so from that uh, trough there to the, uh, the top of the crest uh, about three weeks later, uh, we've got a 2.2% uh, rise uh, in the price of, of gold. And in this case, uh, we'll be able to capture most of that cycle. Uh, looks like a fairly high probability trade. Uh, the, the, the gold um, markets remain a little bit more uh, uh, unstable, uncertain, a little bit more volatile. Uh, and so this is not quite a slam dunk, uh, and the percentage of probability is not as, quite as high as we'd like to see it. But if mm -hmm. we enter a trade on the 7th of July uh, and uh, then uh, uh, close that position on the 27th, uh, that has a 63.6% .6 probability of being a winning trade. Now, again, that's mm -hmm. up to the individual. If you're uh, comfortable with that kind of, of probability, uh, by all means, uh, take a look at it. Uh, and for some of us, that's a little bit too near a coin toss to, to jump into. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's a matter of personal discretion there. Well, the last one you have is certainly a non-volatile uh, trading vehicle, and that's Bitcoin. <laughs> that's about as stable as it comes. <laughs> Absolutely. This one is 77% probability, huh? That's right. Uh, and yeah. Bitcoin's uh, very, very interesting. You know, we've been uh, tracking it for some time, looking at various uh, planetary factors. And one of the things that we had uh, not uh, seen the correlation before uh, uh, is uh, Zeus. Uh, but as it turns out here, uh, we do have a strong uh, correlation. And in this case, as we look at the, the numbers in the left-hand column there, we're looking for a potentially about a 9% bump uh, in the price of, of Bitcoin uh, with a, a, a trade uh, in this time frame. Uh, so remember, there are other factors at work, but just based on our backtesting of this one factor, uh, the Zeus Direct Stations, what we're seeing is if we enter the a long position on the 8th of July and then uh, close it out on the 23rd, we do have that 77.8%, almost 78% uh, probability of it being a winning trade. Uh, so again, uh, you know, uh, recognize the fact that all trades put us at risk, and especially with an extremely uh, volatile market like this uh, uh, with Bitcoin, if we're proposing uh, a holding position here for about two weeks, uh, there can be a lot of excursions along the way. And so, uh, you know, get your Pepto-Bismol and put the trade on if you, if you, can, <laughs> if you can stomach it. Right? So, yeah. oh, 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 stay with me one second. There's a call coming in here. Just a minute. Hold on. Stay with okay. me, Tim. Yes, sir. Yes, I got it. Yes, sir. You bet. Yes. J July 14th. Uh, Tim, we just received a message from our esteemed leader, Tom O'Brien, that on July 14th, you're going to be back on the air to discuss these five trades. And if any of the five don't work, that will be your last day here at TFNN. And we want oh, to wish I, you the very... <laughs> that's two weeks from today. No, no we're going we're gonna to have you so on you, on the 14th. Get the news ready this. and I'll show up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, believe me. <laughs> These folks are so accustomed to uh, seeing losing trades, listening to me for 14 years. This is going to be a real <laughs> blessing for them, for sure. But we we would like to go through those to see the ins and outs, you know, because the markets, you know, can invert and they can do the exact opposite sometimes. Even though, you know, you think they're going to do one thing, they'll do the other. But these high probabilities, I think it's fun that we could just go back and review those just as because we know that they don't work all the time. I mean, you know, if th well, a third grader doesn't sure. know that, but a fourth grader does, you know, that's it. So, hey, listen, tell us about well, the. You know, uh, if we've got a trade that has a 70 percent chance of succeeding. We could be in the other 30 percent. You know, so that's it. It just works that way, right? 
Now we uh, here's your here's your uh, website here, and uh, you can reach that uh, bit bit dot ly slash tim larry p. And we're going to have you on on the fourteenth. Okay, Tim. All right. That's right. Okay. That's capital T, capital L, capital P. We got a webinar coming up tomorrow. Be sure to connect and we'll hook you up for that. Stay with us, Tim. We'll tell tell more about that webinar. Okay, let's let's give you a little plug for that. Okay. All right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. We're back with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, tell the folks about the upcoming webinar that you have. Right. We've scheduled a webinar uh, tomorrow, and we'll be talking about what's working now in uh, astro trading. I'm going to be doing a couple things. First of all, we'll be reviewing our general approach that we take to, to create the astro trading advantage, uh, the methodology we use in selecting the highest probability trades uh, to kind of give a background on that. And we're also going to be extending what we were talking about here today, taking a closer look at these Zeus dynamics in the markets, uh, specifically examining a, a number of individual equities that we have identified as prime uh, trading candidates around this uh, Zeus Direct station. Uh, so we'll be reviewing what we talked about here today, extending on that, also giving you some great background on how you can get engaged with astro trading yourself. It's in 
entirely free. Uh, uh, connect at bit.ly slash Tim, Larry P. That's capital T, capital L, capital P. Everything else is lowercase. Uh, and that will hook you up with our, our mailing list. I'll send you a notice then on how to connect with the webinar tomorrow. Uh, that'll be about an hour after the closing bell. We're going to schedule that for 5 p.m. Eastern uh, tomorrow on Thursday, the 1st of July. Tim, thank you so much, and we will see you on the 14th of July with your trophies that will be all engraved, and we'll uh, <laughs> okay. make you the trader of the year. I, I like gold, man. Nothing, gold nothing, like, nothing, 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 nothing <laughs> like a little pressure, right? <laughs> exactly. Looking forward to it, my friend. You have a great thank you. Uh, evening you and, and a great holiday, Larry. Bye. Thank you, Tim, Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Folks, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless and continue to help your neighbors. Uh, we're not out of this quagmire yet. We will someday, but whether it'll be in my life time or not, I'm not sure. But there's a lot of things going on in the world that we don't quite understand. So please help your neighbors out. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Don't forget, we have John Jameson tomorrow on blockchains, which I think will be a very interesting show. In fact, I will guarantee it. Money back guarantee. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think